Yeah, this one was against uh, Nikola Jukic, uh, who was a 25-66 GM. And the game began with E4. You are playing with the black pieces this time. Uh, and it was the G6 move, uh, which insp inspired by Vishy Anand, or what is it for you? Uh, well, it became very popular um, uh, lately. I mean, of course, um, I think uh, especially um, towards the middle and the fall of 2018. Of course, uh, there's no denying the fact that it was uh, a lot more popular before, but uh, it was mainly inspired by the fact that uh, I had a lot of, I had a considerable amount of uh, strong uh, GMs, including um, uh, Grandmaster Dave Alexi play against, uh, play played against me with um, uh, with black um, in recent tournaments, and I had been um, having a lot of uh, difficulties finding advantage in this line um, from white side, and um, uh, especially considering the fact that a player of uh, player like uh, Grandmaster Dre Alexi, who was uh, rated about 250, 200 to 250 points above me, was playing it against me, uh, could uh, make me to to uh, could to some extent make me certain that um, it was. Uh, it was a very good line when um, I mean, uh, if I wanted to uh, win, because um, uh, I mean, under no circumstances would I had uh, any sort of norm chances had I even drawn this game. So I had to go all in, and uh, amongst uh, the openings I played, uh, I thought that this was uh, going to be my best bet. And yeah. I had uh, started it recently with, uh, um, I mean, in uh, in a considerable amount of depth with uh, my uh, with a coach of mine, which. Uh, probably uh, inspired me to go for it. Okay, so c3, a6, bishop a4, bg7, uh, d4, and you took on d4, uh, cd, b5, bishop b3, and here uh, you went knight g7. I think uh, d6 is one more move and knight f6 is the other move, I guess, in this position. Um, yes. But you went um, knight g7, which, which I mean, this is uh, all theory, yeah, till now. Uh, yes, I mean, of course. Um, well, over here, short castle d6 is kind of uh, known to be um, harmless for black. Uh, of course, I mean, there's um, uh, there's a considerable amount of detail over here, uh, details over here as well. But I think it should um, be fine at the end of the day, even if you don't remember a large amount of analysis. Yeah. But uh, he went bishop d2, uh, and here uh, somehow, yeah, d5, knight a5, bishop d2. Uh, this b2 pawn is uh, hanging. Did, were you not tempted to pick it up? Okay, well, um, actually, I had um, analyzed uh, this position before, and thankfully for me, I uh, did not, I mean, uh, as I would have in many of the instances, uh, did not forget my preparation and uh, get carried away. I mean, of course, um, I think after bishop b2, bishop a5, bishop a1, uh, knight c3 is uh, probably already uh, yeah. uh, very bad for black hand. I could have uh, sort of uh, uh, just, uh, I mean, resigned in a few moves from now. And I was in no mood uh, to let go of my uh, norm that day. Yeah, sure. So, so you didn't take the pawn on b2. You took uh, you took his bishop, knight b3, queen d3, and then uh, you followed it up uh, with c5. Still, uh, this is still uh, your preparation, I presume. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, it had been played in a few games um, um, recently, and um, yes, I, I think I had a decent preparation over here. Yeah. Well, uh, the next move is pretty uh, surprising. After bishop c3, I would like the viewers to think a bit here. Uh, and then I would like you to explain uh, why you made such a, well, to put it mildly, uh, unconventional move. But when, when I saw it first, it seemed like a very, very bad positional move, uh, positionally. But uh, you have to explain it to us why you did that. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, I played. Um, okay, so well, I played the move f6. Okay, well, um, I, I would start by saying that I was uh, still in my preparation, and uh, apart from that, I think it's. Um, I mean, if you know that d6 
96 is probably um, not uh, very uh, dangerous for black i think it's um, absolutely um, normal to go with this move because i mean um, i think once i get uh, d6 myself i would um, have a great position and i had a decent knowledge of the positions arising after d6 knight e6 um, i mean okay well um, um i mean speaking from a human point of view i think uh, i'm getting c4 on the next move which uh, i mean uh, which would eventually solve all my problems i mean of course uh, there's uh, some i mean there are a few things that um, um i think the player the playing this position from black side needs to know but um i mean okay well um um yeah it's more like concrete stuff yeah you you at some point you want to play c4 then you may want to play b4 and push the bishop away and then play f5 something like that yes yes okay so um you played f6 he went d6 you went knight c6 and well he was uh, uh, quite he looked quite confident he went queen d5 were you both blitzing out your moves or taking your time I think I was, and uh, I was. Uh, I mean, as far as I remember, I was blitzing out my moves uh, up till this point. When um, I was literally shocked when he played uh, queen d5. I mean, there's a funny story to it uh, that I'll come to shortly. And um, he was uh, kind of surprised because actually I'd always. Uh, I mean, I had been playing e4, e5. Um, uh, okay, a lot um, in the uh, in my recent games, uh, but I'd always played a6. So uh, I mean. Uh, I understand that uh, there must haven't been a lot of games he was able to. Uh, he might have been able, or find that he might have been able to find. But uh, I mean, in the little games I played, I uh, I had actually preferred e4, e5 exclusively over a lot of uh, other lines. Mm. But uh, I mean, at the same time, I had uh, never played any side or any sort of sideline like probably uh, g6 or uh, a6, bishop a4, g6 for that matter. I mean, I always uh, went with um, the knight f6 main line. Hmm. So, so that's why he he had no chances of being prepared uh, for you. But uh, he he went queen d five, and now I think you you had to think for your moves. Yes, I mean, well, this is um, I, th I mean um, I think this is uh, I mean queen d five is absolutely natural. I mean, um, of course, um, as it, as it happened in the game, uh, black. Uh, I mean. Okay, well, uh, I think I got lucky. I I was in uh, good shape that day, but um, I mean, <laughs> if you sort of uh, don't know a lot of, I mean, the, a considerable amount of stuff here, it, uh, I mean, in the time when you'll be getting into uh, a lot of trouble and a lot of serious trouble is uh, not that far. Yes, uh, because now you went d4. Uh, he he went bishop to d2 and um, yeah I should probably add that uh, I mean the position before queen d5 was exactly the one I just uh, uh, looked at before the match I mean um, I think I even played an online blitz um, in this game where my opponent went uh, short castle and um, okay well I mean um, while I was uh, sort of just uh, going through my analysis I, I was I mean I was wondering as to why queen d5 is impossible I um, uh, put on the engine. I mean, I didn't see any of its suggestions because uh, I try not to uh, look at the engine a lot just before the match, and it showed uh, a decent advantage for black. So I just shut it down. Okay, well, I just saw that something like b4, bishop b2, bishop b7, and I thought that oh, I mean, okay, well, I tried to convince myself uh, not to look at the engine and just uh, presume that okay, I mean, black will have decent compensation for oh, I mean, over the board. Uh, I mean, I was terrified at the sight of this move. It's like going uh, going inside the examination hall and just seeing one question. Oh, this might come, and you say, "Okay, we'll." Uh, this I mean, just try to convince yourself that this won't come due to some very absurd reason, and then it comes. Sort of, uh, uh, which is uh, which comes, and you're doomed. I mean, this has happened uh, a number of times with me, even uh, in examination. Uh, but uh, I mean, of course, uh, the amount it cost me in the examinations are uh, probably uh, a half a mark or one at maximum, and the amount it was about to cost me over here was the um, GM norm. The GM norm, and moreover, things that um, you sort of, uh, I mean, at least for me, uh, didn't make a good comparison. Yeah. 
well here yeah, now might be a good time to tell our viewers that you you sort of maintain a, what 10 cgpa uh, in school uh, yes i mean okay well it would uh, probably be fair to say that i rather maintain one i mean um, well, i mean right now i'm in grade 10 i started grade 10 in april i was uh, maintaining one till grade 8 and as i said uh, in grade 9 i could not um, i did not uh, i mean so that i could not uh, take my academics very seriously Mm-hmm. because uh, i mean okay well as i said i mean being pursuing the of the grand master title being in pursuit of the grand master title was one of the main reasons but um, i mean okay well um, i had to look a lot after my health probably if i mm-hmm. had to appear for any sort of exams or even uh, think of traveling to any tournaments which uh, i should say the doctors are uh, completely disapproved of i mean it took a lot of uh, convincing and a lot of um, help to uh, i mean gain their approval and probably uh, get me in the right shape to play those tournaments without facing a lot of problems so okay so right now in, uh, in grade 10 i have uh, sort of prepared chess uh, over academics slightly i mean i haven't attended a lot of school um i've sort of considered some kind of decent amount of syllabus so, i mean of course there's a lot to do as well and now needless to say i'll be uh, sort of limiting the number of tournaments uh, uh being and focusing a lot more on academics since i have my board exams approaching in march well, well i would say it was good news for chess fans that you focused more on chess uh, and and your school uh, is uh, vasant vihar or a uh, modern school also modern school vasant vihar and uh, it supports you pretty well yeah because i saw some pictures when you came back from after your gm title that uh, school kids had come to the airport with the banners to welcome you so that must have felt special i mean it certainly did um, i mean kids um, whom uh, sort of i mean i uh, once uh, a, lo- a lot of them with whom i played it uh, with that one uh, at one point of time and uh, even got uh, defeated by very badly and uh, some kids who possibly uh, i mean i don't mean to boast but uh, might be uh, looking up to me in some manner I mean, trying to pay the respect. I mean, of course, it uh, did feel very special. Wonderful. Okay, coming back to the game, the queen has moved to d5, and now your c5 pawn is hanging. Uh, but but you didn't really care for it. You you just went bishop d7. Uh, sorry, first b4, bishop d2, and then bishop d7. Uh, he he took on c5, so that's one pawn down, and now. Uh, well you you need to tell me which would be the right points for our viewers to think a bit for for your moves because okay, i probably, think um, yeah i mean this might be a good point to pause your video for a second or so maybe but um, i mean yeah. of course um, the move i played next is uh, kind of obvious but i mean it's still um, i mean might uh, just be good in order to get with the flow of the position because um, I mean, okay. Well, black should be having pretty good compensation even after short castle, maybe because uh, white uh, generally, I mean, is having a, um, a disaster. I mean, a catastrophe when it comes to uh, developing his pieces. But um, I mean, of course, um, it would be. Uh, it, uh, I mean, as it uh, as it happened, so I mean, it was um, much better for me to um, put in a lot more energy and. Um, Yeah, I mean, sort of um, start posing uh, much more concrete problems uh, at this moment itself. Yes, you put in a lot of energy, and and you went for the move f5, which uh, opens up your bishop. Now looks at the b2 square, uh, and and your opponent immediately said, "Well, I'm not going to give you any room right now." He he closed it with e5, and. and well you could have castled here but i think you you already wanted to get something more uh, from this position yes i mean also uh, i uh, couldn't really see something for black after castle castle i mean of course it's obvious that black should be having uh, uh, i mean a considerable amount of compensation but um, i mean uh, as i said i couldn't really see anything direct and um, i uh, tried to sort of think about this position why even um, when i was analyzing the game on my own without the engine the stuff to coming back where i couldn't find anything and um, as the engine happened to claim um, it um, isn't really easy for black to um, uh hold um, hold this position if it isn't for the move queen if i i mean and there's some um, intricacies that probably uh, lead to some kind of a draw uh, 
some kind of uh, roish or an equal endgame or uh, in some cases black uh, maintains a uh, decent compensation for the pawn okay so uh, you went rook c8 which is again a very active move uh, and he went back queen e3 and i think uh, now again we should let our viewers think so you have uh, you are a pawn down and white has these beautiful central pawns on e5 and d6 uh, how do you continue here so prithu uh, how difficult was it for you to find the next move did it come like uh, as you said take one second for our viewers when when you said to find f5 uh, was this also one second move for you or this took more uh -huh, totally not i mean okay well um, i should add that i uh, saw this move um, uh, before i uh, played uh, rook c8 i mean of course well there's uh, not a lot of uh, options i uh, possibly have in that position but um, okay well at this point um, i mean the move which i played uh, next uh, required a lot of courage and i couldn't exactly see um, the way which i was getting made it in so i mean i just decided why not to go for this yes and, and uh, if i doesn't pose um, any direct problems i think um, um, I, i i mean i just thought he was going to be in uh, some kind of uh, trouble so yes. i just decided to go for it okay tell us the move what was it uh, it was g5 G five. Okay, this was tremendous. The pawn can be taken in two ways with the queen and with the knight. Uh, in the game, he took it with the knight. But what happens if he takes with the queen? Okay, I mean, um, I, I think I'll just I'll just uh, take with the queen. Um, um, I, I he takes with the bishop and I take the pawn on e five and. Um, well uh, as you can see also white as a pawn up i mean he's inevitably losing the pawn on b2 and um, um the pawn on d6 well uh, might uh, look slightly dangerous at the moment but i'm not quite sure as to how helpful or i mean even if it will be of uh, the slightest help to white uh, in the future i mean and uh, and, uh, and of course uh, uh one should uh, pay uh, heed to the fact that um, i mean defending b2 is not uh, very easy i mean it even this allows you from uh, castling at this point yes and look at your bishops like uh, criss crossing the entire board beautiful pieces uh so so yeah, he was very aesthetically pleasing uh, to, uh, if not anything else to probably uh, just um, look at those bits of uh, just look at those bishops rook and of course uh, the eternal beauty of the pawn and before which was even uh, more um, uh pleasant to uh more pleasant to explore a few moves later yes yes the pawn is is stopping knight c3 and in general i think is a big asset for you uh, yes i mean um as we go further in the game it probably even stops uh, white from making any kind of active development and uh, i mean as uh, as that we uh, also see as to uh, why it uh, played uh, such a huge role i mean it was uh, probably just a pawn that uh, probably i mean that helped uh, gaining my bishops gaining considerable amount of good activity valuable activity and of course while stopping white from developing his piece so correct okay so he took knight g5 and uh, well again i think the viewers should spend a bit of time uh, over here what would you do here as black uh, prithu you have a pawn on e5 that is uh, sort of hanging here but you you decided not to touch it you went for something else yeah what did you do i went for f4 f4 <laughs> it's like you you gave up c5 then you gave up g5 now you're giving up f4 uh wh why are you doing this wh why not just pick up the e5 pawn okay well um, i mean If I pick up the e5 pawn directly, I mean, oh uh, well, I think White has f4 first of all, and um, yeah. I mean, okay, well, I uh, didn't even, I mean, even at this point, to be honest, I couldn't see a lot of other um, useful options for uh, for Black. I mean, probably, okay, well, knight e5, f4. I mean. Yeah, actually, I don't see anything over there. After yeah, nothing. Is, nothing is there. Maybe bishop g two, but then rook g one, or if you even short castle, then f e five. That doesn't seem much, but still, this uh, pawn sacrifice with f four looks really beautiful. Uh, you you give one pawn after the other, queen into f four, 
and now yeah, I mean, also in matches like these i mean uh, i uh, i mean in critical matches like these i also sort of uh, pay to the fact that uh, pay uh, pay to uh, safety or to, to the fact of safety uh, because um, i mean i couldn't see a way, way in which uh, i was getting i was getting mated uh, directly so i mean i just decided why not to go for it yes So Nihar, uh, he went uh, uh, queen f4. You took on e5, and now knight d3 check is coming. So he he simply castled, and here you are two pawns down. Your king is in the center of the board. Uh, to assess this position accurately is not at all easy, uh, and uh, I think once again we should ask uh, our viewers, what do you do now? Uh, I think every move is like uh, sort of a trivia. Uh, yes. Okay. So, so Prithu, how did you continue your uh, initiative in this position? Okay. Well, um, f4, queen f4, knight e5, uh, short castle, rook mm -hmm. c4. Rook to c4. Okay. So your rook comes into the game, and it seems like just an attack on the queen. But surprisingly, the white queen doesn't have too many squares to go to. Yes, I mean uh, it's. Uh, I think safe to say that he's uh, running out of a lot of good options. Um, and uh, okay, well, I considered um, oh, queen f5, queen f5. I mean, after queen f5, queen f6, I uh, felt uh, really safe, and I had a very good feeling about my position. But uh, I also considered some other moves like uh, knight f7 over here, which uh, I mean, of course, I mean once you see them um, with the engine, they might not seem a lot, but. Um, Okay, well, over the board, um, this was uh, not exactly the case. I mean, I was calculating. I mean, at first, uh, I was calculating some lines like uh, rook f4, knight d8, but mm -hmm. um, needless to say, I couldn't see um, a lot for why. I mean, black in that position. So after knight f7, I even started calculating queen f6 over there. Okay. So um, I was uh, mainly paying attention to the lines after queen f6, bishop f6, knight h8, rook g4, and um, here is the first point where you might just want to um, pay some respect to that guy on b4. Clearly <laughs> rook down, but um, I mean I couldn't see an exact way for white to probably pose. Um, I mean, to to win directly, but of course. Um, I would say pay respect to rook on g4 or bishop on b7 or knight on e5, but you you really love that pawn on b4. No, I mean, uh, it. Uh, I don't think you uh, you get to see things like these every day, um, where uh, basically you know a pawn is uh, stopping um, by uh, by knight from coming out with of which of course might uh, needless to say might be uh, dangerous because. Um, um okay well uh, because it uh, potentially uh, i don't know might uh, block some uh, might block the g line and uh, uh, once white um, starts to develop his pieces i mean there's basically a lot of uh, extra material that he has so it uh, won't be very difficult so uh, mm -hmm. yeah after rook g5 was uh, calculating um, some lines like uh, i mean um, f3 maybe or um, yeah, f3 knight f3 And uh, king f2 and over here, okay. Well, knight e2 seems natural, but I was looking at rook g2. Rook g2, okay. Yeah, and uh, this is why um, the I mean, yeah, and king g2 and knight e2. And now, if king f2, I just take on f1. You take on f1, and after king f1, there is b2 is hanging. Uh, yeah, and the and the nice thing. Okay, now I I appreciate the pawn on b4. Yes, uh, because <laughs> because uh, after knight f1 he can't play knight to c3, and and his uh, pieces are just trapped. Beautiful position. I mean, I love it. Yes, I mean, okay. Well, uh, as it uh, usually happens, this uh, I mean, it wasn't long before I discovered that the, that uh, this isn't working. And um, the fact that after rook g4, I think he can just play uh, rook e1 and. Okay, well, there's uh, still a few precise moves as the uh, uh, as my silicon friend over here points out with uh, bishop g2, f4, bishop e4, king um, f1, 
and um, so on. But I mean, okay, well, uh, one plus or okay, one I uh, wasn't really in the mood to calculate a lot. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think after knight f7, I can simply go queen b8 or queen a8 in that position, and uh, uh, queen b8. Sorry, in that position, and um, mm -hmm. probably uh, White is uh, sort of struggling to uh, prove something. Okay. Okay. So queen b8 would have uh, given you a good position. He went after rook c4, queen to I f5. Mean, it would have given me. Um, um, I mean, okay. Well, I would have. Uh, I think had. Um, I mean, I would have been piece up. I mean, the engine certainly points out um, your queen g5, king f7, f4. But um, okay, well, um, I mean, I think it's safe to assume that uh, it isn't very easy to calculate all of this over the board. Yes. So uh, I think uh, after rook c4, he went queen to f5, uh, and and here uh, you switched gears basically from. Uh, sort of attacking, attacking. You you offered your queen for an exchange. Yes. Yeah. But this is the strongest move. Um, yes, I think so. And uh, this is I think also made possible by the valiant efforts of the pawn on b4. Yes. Yeah, I'm not going to now say uh, no about it. I I have understood its significance. No, I mean it's uh, just beautiful to see how well Black's uh, pieces are coordinating right now. I mean you have the bishops, you um, I mean you have a good uh, knight in the center, and um, your H8 rook, which is pro which was probably uh, doing nothing till a move ago, is uh, suddenly about to jump in with uh, the means of something like even car, um, with the means of something like rook J8 or even uh, short castles for that matter. Yeah. So your opponent took on f6, bishop f6, and now uh, he went f3. Uh, maybe uh, just trying to create a square for his knight on e4, yeah, something like that. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, as uh, I mean, as we'll see, there was a little uh, trick associated uh, with this. I, um, I mean, to be honest, when I saw this position, I was uh, sort of um, trying to. Um, See something after rookie one, but okay. Well, after short castle, I mean, um, okay. Well, I don't see a way to exa I mean, I don't really see a way for why to defend his position. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, dropping the b2 pawn anytime soon, and he can't really develop his uh, uh, b1 knight even by d2. And okay, well, um, I think uh, black is um, enjoying a huge advantage. Yeah, black is clearly better. So white went f3. And then after knight d3, uh, already b2 is is falling. So your opponent decided to at least finish his development. He played bishop to e3 to get his knight out to d2. Yes, I, I mean I should admit that um, I uh, completely missed this move. I mean, okay, well, um, if uh, if a GM of that level is uh, playing uh, f3, a move like f3, I mean, there's of course no way uh, he uh, he'll miss the knight d3. But I mean, of course, well, I absolutely missed uh, Bishop E3 uh, while calculating this. I mean, I think after he played Bishop E3, I realized that maybe a move uh, ago, probably something like H6 or Rook C2 would have won easily because after Rook C2, Bishop B4, I uh, have Bishop G5. Yeah, but you don't want to give up that B4 pawn, I feel. No, I mean, in this case, it would, um, it would have uh, sort of been an offer I couldn't refuse. Sure. Okay. So rook c2 was stronger, but you went uh, knight d3, bishop e3. I mean, and now. The, uh, the simplest move of all h6 was also um, pretty good. I mean, just kicking his knight to h3 and then probably um, bringing my knight to d3 or maybe uh, rook c2, bishop e4, rook g8. I mean, uh, there were a lot of good options. Yeah, knight, I, I'm not uh, really saying the knight d3 was particularly bad, but of course, um, I mean, um, uh, there were there were options that could have maybe yielded uh, black a quicker victory. Yeah. So knight d3, bishop e3, and you went rook g8, and he attacked your rook with knight d2. So finally, he can complete his development. Uh, but but you are much more active. You went rook to c2. Okay. Well. Um, yeah. I mean. Okay. Well. Uh, uh, um, I, oh, at this point, I felt that. Um, uh, I mean, it was uh, important to make uh, rook g8. Uh, I mean, the move uh, rook g8 at uh, some point of time. 
I mean, um, uh, it could probably be a move later after I play Rook C2. I mean, or uh, as I did uh, right now. But um, I mean, it was um, sort of important to probably uh, post some problems before uh, he uh, was uh, easily able to complete his uh, development because uh, I mean, uh, it. Uh, I mean, well. Uh, I, yeah, you, you are two points down, so you have to be careful. Uh, of course. Yeah. So, so knight h3, and then you took on b2, so you recovered one pawn. Uh, rook a d1. And and here, uh, I think it's more about the quality of the pawns. Uh, your a and b pawns are very strong. I mean, they, you're going to create a passer there, while white's kingside pawns are not so strong. Yeah. So bishop c3, he went knight to f2, and, and you uh, refrained from an exchange, you played knight to e5, uh, and uh, well, he went knight d4. Yeah. I think it was already not so easy to, to defend against all these tricks like knight into f3 and uh, everything in this position, bishop d2. Okay. Yes, I mean of course. Well, um, black is uh, dropping. Uh, sorry, white is dropping another pawn on a2 um, really soon, and um, uh, there's no way you can even make a move like um, f4, g3, or I mean for that matter, uh, yeah. even uh, rook e1. Yes. So, well, rook e1. Uh, how do you finish him off? Um, I mean um, rook f1. Yeah. I think I can just go bishop f3. Bishop to f3, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, he to take the uh, bishop with the knight because of knight f3 and uh, he's dropping the pawn on g2 next, I guess. Correct. Okay, so he went uh, knight d4. You took on f3 with your knight, king h1, and now uh, knight h4. Your attack still continues even with the minor pieces and rooks. Yes, I mean, well, it keeps on flowing. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, uh, well, well, I don't want to say a lot, but um, it keep it kind of uh, never uh, slows down. I mean, and um, I think uh, we uh, uh, we have uh, the bishop on b7, and the, uh, well, well, basically every piece uh, of black should give credit for that. Yes, everyone is playing. It's a complete team effort. Uh, bishop g5, knight into g2, uh, after king g2, now you took on e4. Everything is pinned like the bishop on g5, the knight on f2. He went yeah. king h3 and, and now it's uh, uh, going to be a quick mate. Bishop f5 check, king h4, h6, bishop f4, bishop f6, king h5 and Rook c5, a, a beautiful end, uh, Riku. I, I think this, this game of yours uh, is, is so brilliant. Maybe uh, it will take you some time to, to play uh, another game like this. I really loved it. I mean, of course, um, well, I would um, sort of have... I mean, this was exactly uh, the point uh, where, I mean, I, I should say that I got lucky. Okay, well, um, I mean, because um, no matter, I don't mean to boast a lot, but okay, well, uh, sort of, um, I mean, no matter how uh, talented one is, or maybe how much, irrespective of how talented I am, how much work I put in, I mean, it's uh, still probably, um, uh, it was still probably really difficult to task for me, or maybe uh, impossible to task for me to play a game like this. I mean, um, uh, it's uh, literally the type of game where, I mean, you yourself are, uh, sort of aren't able to understand as to uh, how it happened where, when you look at it after uh, playing it over the board or when you come back and so on. Yes. Well, now we understood it, how it all happened. Uh, and, and just for our viewers, a very quick recap. Uh, first, he, he gave up the C5 pawn here. Then he gave up his F5 pawn, which was not taken. Uh, the position was closed and then the real fireworks began with g5, then f4 and uh, the rook came in, queens were exchanged, the other rook joined in from g8. Uh, yeah, this is a great game. 
so prithu uh, i guess on that note uh, we we should uh, call it a day uh, it was wonderful talking to you i would really be uh, interested okay. to know uh, what what are your future plans now uh, are, are there any tournaments lined up for you right now okay uh, well um, i have my exams in september uh, well, because of uh, which i probably uh, won't be playing uh, many to anywhere in uh, august and um, August and of course for the month of September, but uh, I mean of course uh, I will, I'm looking forward to uh, playing in uh, the World Youth and World Junior Championships um, in October, and maybe um, I mean if uh, not them some other tournament. Um, but needless to say, I mean of course I'll have to uh, cut down a lot on the tournaments and training sessions um, because um, I mean as I said I have my board exams uh, approaching. Uh, in the first uh, quarter of uh, 2020 which uh, uh, so certainly going to be very crucial yes well uh, we hope that you you do well in your examinations and like always you have been balancing both uh, your academics and chess you continue doing so and then you come back and you start playing again and then keep moving upwards uh, towards your aim i guess uh, it could be the world champion or it could be top 10 in the world whatever it is uh, ho hope you continue doing that thank you yeah thanks a lot prithu it was wonderful talking to you thank you so